How many of you are familiar with the book of Job? Or as my grandson says, Job. He thinks Job is the place in the Bible where he's going to get employment one day. I'm saying, like, it's Job. And it's not about any employment. It's about a miraculous story. In fact, it's the oldest book in the Bible, the book of Job. And there's a couple of things about it that I think warrant our attention. The first two chapters is the setup, where Satan's before the Lord. And the Lord says to Satan, have you ever thought about my servant Job? It's like God brings Job up. Sometimes I've wondered, Lord, why am, I in this situa- why, why am I in this current situation? It's because God's placed me there for a purpose. You know, he brings my name up. He gives me the assignment. So Job got this assignment, unbeknownst to Job. The first time, Satan goes out and, you know, takes away his family and a litany of things, comes back, and the Lord says, what do you think about Job? He held up pretty well. And then Job, Satan says, yeah, but if you let me take his uh, health, you know, he'll fold like a deck of cards. And so the Lord says, all right, do anything but kill him. Now, I would hate for, to think that God is in heaven saying, you know, you can do anything to test you but kill him, because I know his faith. But that's what happened. And so for the next chapters, it's about Job's friends coming, and they're talking to him and saying, what did you do wrong, Job? And it goes on and on and on. And then the last three chapters before 42, talks about God speaks. And, and he says, look, where were you when all this was going on? God asserts himself into the equation as the awesome God that he is. And then it brings us to the last chapter. And the last chapter is what I really want to focus on for just a minute. The Lord says to the three buddies of Job that came alongside him and said he must have messed up. If Job prays for you, I will forgive you. You know, you need to go build these sacrifices and the altars and I'll take care of it, but have Job pray for you, all right? Because he says, Job is right and you were wrong. That's, that's, a, that's a castigation. When God tells you you're wrong, he's right. And then in verse 10 of chapter 42, we read this. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord made him prosperous again and gave him twice as much as he had before. Now, what's important about this passage? There are two verbs in the Hebrew that are important. The first one is prayed. The word pray here in the Hebrew means that you are assaulting a greater power than yourself to take care of your situation. It's like you're talking to a judge. A judge has the capacity to take care of your your mess. So when he prayed, he's talking to God. Secondly, it says the Lord restored. The word restore there is an interesting word in Hebrew. It means that something that belonged to you was stolen and now is in the possession of somebody else. It's like my car. If somebody stole my car and it was in a garage in Dallas, It's still my car. They stole it, they have possession, but it's mine. It's mine, it's rightfully mine. Now, what's interesting about this passage, it says when Job assaulted God on behalf of his friends, when he forgave his friends, God gave Job back what was rightfully his. He gave him back his children, gave him back his possessions, gave him back his health. Everything that the enemy had tried to steal from Job which rightfully belonged to Job, was restored, was returned when he prayed and forgave his friends. And this is a powerful message for us. When you and I pray and forgive our friends, God will restore the stuff the enemy has stolen from us. It's not the enemy's, it's mine. And when I pray, God gives a release and all of it comes back. I don't pray to get stuff back. I pray because it's the right thing to do to forgive and release. And God restores, he returns that which is rightfully mine. In your case, it may be your health. It may be some possessions, your job. Release your friends through prayer, assault God through prayer, and trust God to restore what the enemy has stolen from you in this time. I hope this helps you. Look up Job 42, read verse 10, and let it be applicable to your life.